Today on The Educators, governors clash over mass mandates. Though the White House still follows the CDC guidance on children wearing masks in schools, governors of Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, and Oregon plan to lift state mask mandates. We wait in. Plus, do you want to support black teachers? Well, invest in hiring more black teachers. Andrew will have all the info for us on why we need more black teachers in schools. Then, stop watching Fox News. The co-hosts of The Five exposed the damage of teachers' unions in remote learning, and Danji McDowell expressed her thoughts on why teachers need to quit their job and find another job that when they don't show up for work, they will fire their butts. We have so much to say, and you don't want to miss our discussion on it. And we're still celebrating Black History Month all month long with the incredible people who have paved the way for all of us. So let's get started. The Educators with Coach Donnell Jerome, Andrew Fred, and me, Damian Anderson. The Educators starts now. Welcome to The Educators, and hello to you all. We hope all of you are having a great week so far, and we have lots of topics in store for you guys on today. Um, so now, as you can see, once again, our very own Coach D, he is still not with us, but don't you worry. Hopefully, he'll be back with us soon. So, Andrew, how are you doing on today? Are you doing great? You're good? Fine? All right. Thumbs up? All right. So let's get started, you guys, with the show today. Um, Andrew, why don't you take it away from us? All right. So um, first, what I do, first off of the today is school, former administrator, school school administrator, um, pled guilty to spending almost $250,000 on personal shopping. So um, this is coming from Arkansas, Um, a former administrator for the Little Rock School District in Arkansas, pled guilty to mail fraud on Wednesday after spending more than $230,000 in school district's funds for her personal online shopping. And according to a news release from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Arkansas. From August 2018 to August 2014 to August 2018, uh, she, she has spent more than $4,000 on a recliner, bath rugs, home, other home goods from Wayfair, more than $27,000 on 83 unauthorized purchases through PayPal, more than nineteen thousand two hundred dollars on two thousand four hundred sixty-two items from Amazon, including housewares, makeup, clothing, gift cards, vet products, knitting materials for a total of two hundred and thirty thousand six hundred and thirty-five two hundred thirty two hundred and thirty thousand six hundred thirty-five point eighty-six dollars and fraudulent purchases uh, according to the release she was using two uh the district's credit cards that was funded by the state and federal grants that was issued to make purchases for early childhood programs within the district as part of the credit card agreements she had to sign stating that they could so that the cards could not be used for gift cards or personal purchases or items could not be shipped to her house. The district discovered in August 2018 saying that she submitted fabricated receipts and false transaction logs according to release. They have retained the original receipts from vendors to verify the actual purchases and find many of the purchases were sent to her house. Uh, on top of that, uh, plea agreement will require her to pay that amount in restitution to the school district uh, she will be sentenced at a later day for later day by the U.S. District Court judge. So, um, spent almost two hundred. I was like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars 
on personal items. By using the school district's credit cards. Well, ain't that something right there? Ugh. Like you couldn't wait until payday. Are you? Wow. Are you? Are you that desperate? You couldn't wait until payday. Apparently not. Apparently not. Cause I know. I know. For us, we get paid at the end of the month. So I, I know. I know. We be struggling. But are you, you know, at this spread? Mm. You know, by you, by you using two credit cards and decided that was funded by the state and the federal, okay, your job was supposed to make purchases by, for the early childhood purchases with industry today, not to be used as personal purchases. You even signed an agreement saying that it cannot be used as personal purchases. That's the part that I don't understand. You sign a contract, but yet you broke that contract. And this is where you get you. I tell you something, this 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 pandemic has really oh, 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 these people and these and, people. And, and now you have to pay back. Now you have to pay back that amount. That two hundred and thirty thousand dollars worth. You had to pay that amount. First and foremost, why would you do that? It's ridiculous. Why would you do that? Hearing these what stories. Is, what is your... Hearing these stories. To me, it's pitiful. It's upsetting. It's sad. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's it, it's it's all it's all of the above. I don't <laughs> I don't get this. I don't get this. Spending more on personal online shopping using the district's credit cards. Are you really, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I know. I know. I know. I know that teachers you know we this is not the i don't get this this, this is not the way i'm sorry you guys this is not the way why was you so desperate of doing this in the first place to me that's my first question like why why on on, on buying personal items for yourself and not trying to help out with the school that just that just that that doesn't sit right with me. I don't know why it doesn't sit right with me. Don't, don't you have your own credit card that you can use for yourself to buy personal items? That part. I mean. That part. I, I, makes, it, it makes no sense. Like, why would you use the district money? I mean, you could have at least <sighs> I don't get it. It it's I'm telling you. But yet it was Go. fun by the state and the federal grant. Uh -huh. And you spent about two hundred, I would say two hundred and forty thousand dollars on personal items. Yeah. What like why would you do that? Yeah. What could possibly what you need so badly? Like, what is it? Oh, mm -mm. Like, again, like you couldn't wait until the end of the month. 
this when was this released? This was released in February. Yeah. So this month. So you couldn't so you couldn't wait until you file your taxes. Because it's tax season. Yeah. So you couldn't wait until you get your W-2s in the mail and start filing out your taxes. And you couldn't wait nine to 10 days to have your refund hit your bank account. Hmm. You couldn't do that. Now it says from August 2014 to 2018. Oh, what leads me to a whole bunch of questions. Why do y'all find out until, well, y'all discover it in 2018, but why it took y'all four years? That's, 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 that's very interesting right there. Yeah, that's, that's very that's, interesting. That's another, that's another question I had. Why, why it took y'all four years? Mm. It should be at least a week. At least, I, not even at least, I would say like a couple of days. This story is so messed up. It is. It really is. I mean, don't y'all, I'm, 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 not, I'm not getting into that, no. Mm -mm. It, it just... They're just uh, now, they are just now finding out about this. They're just now finding out about this. this. And this has been over, over, it's been going on for the past four years. And you're just now finding out. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, I don't know what to say <laughs> about that. There's things called cameras, you guys. Don't y'all have cameras around to see this? Please, Footage, don't y'all have evidence? Don't you have receipts anyway? Hmm. Don't mm. you have like a little a notification on your phone? Hey, this person spent this amount of money mm. on your phone. That should ring a bell. Yeah. That should ring a bell. But yet, it took y'all four years to. Well, it took it took y'all four years to find the evidence to charge her yeah yeah that's yeah mm -mm. no that it's Okay, you guys, we're, we're going to stop here. We are going to stop here and we're going to have to take a break because, yeah, we're, I'm not getting into all that. I'm really not, not today, not today, you guys. So we had to take a break, but don't you guys worry. We got more topics for you guys coming up. So you stay right there because you are watching The Educators. Welcome back to the educators. It's time for more topics. So 
you guys, it, it's hard to imagine a day where our children are not wearing masks in school. Well, get this, you guys, that day could be coming very soon to New Jersey because the governor over there, um, Phil Murphy, he announced it last Monday that the state will live its school mask mandates and a new policy will take effect the second week of March, no longer requiring students or employees to wear a mask. And there has been a nationwide debate on this and we had did many episodes on this matter here, which I'm sick and tired of talking about it, but you guys, it's, it's, it's what it is this school year. Um, but this appears to be a deliberate move to treat COVID-19 as part of our daily life. Um, so, and we actually have a clip for you guys. Um, so let's check it out. Yeah, the governor is expected to make that announcement later today at one o'clock this afternoon. The governor saying that the new policy will take effect the second week of March, no longer requiring students or employees to wear a mask. Of course, there has been a nationwide debate on this, but this appears to be a deliberate move to treat COVID as part of daily life. Now, the governors of Pennsylvania made the same announcement last month. And of course, the governors of New York and Connecticut, uh, they actually said that last week that they are reevaluating their own policies. So we will be watching that, guys. All right. So what do we think about this? What do we think about this? Well, I am going to start off because now you have, you have, um, like he said, you have Pennsylvania, then you have Connecticut, you have New Jersey, Delaware, um, Oregon, you have New York. Um, a lot of states, you guys, they are, and, and it's the governors, in which I don't understand this as well. It should not be the governors to make these types of decisions um, for their state. That's just my take on it. But it is too soon. It is too soon. Why do I say it is too soon to lift mass mandates? for our children in schools, because you guys, a lot of people, and also with the CDC, people are not listening to the CDC. I don't know why, because they are correct with our students in schools. It doesn't matter if you're elementary, you're middle, you're high school. This is my take, all students should, they need to keep wearing the mask, they need to, especially middle school and high school students, because you don't know you don't know if a student is gonna go home and could possibly spread the disease to their family members. You don't know that. You don't know that. And with me, the governor's making these types of decision to live mass mandates, I don't like it. I don't like it. I wish my governor over here in Tennessee will tell us that because I'm not listening to him. I am not because I don't, I. It's not time, it's not time just yet. And I know that cases of COVID, it is starting to go back down, but you guys, we are still in this mess. We are still in this. And I'm sorry, we gotta keep wearing the mask. I'm sorry, our children needs to keep on wearing the mask. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's just my take with it. So Andrew, what do you think of this, of, of many states? lifting their mass mandates do you think it do you think it's time to to start stop wearing the mask especially for our students in schools what's your take on it all right so i'm um to answer your question at this point in time um i, I don't know okay and here's the reason why i'm saying i don't know is because, like you said, there are some governors that went ahead and lift the mask mandates. Um, right here in North Carolina, where I'm at, um, there is an um, one uh, one school district in Johnson County had um, one school in Johnson County has decided to lift the to, to have mass optional 
Hmm. That's in Johnson County. Uh, and then I just like I'm currently doing research as we speak right now. So if you see me, if I'm looking up on my my the the other screen, I'm still doing some researching. But um, other than that, uh, Franklin County is they're hoping to to they're hoping to shift from mass require to mass optional in early March. Okay. Uh, because our governor Cooper uh, announced the, the 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 changes um on to the to the toolkit which I'm trying to find and it's not on there because effective on February 21st uh it will loosen some of the requirements that we follow to contract tracing and inclusion of students who are potentially exposed to the virus. So in other words, basically losing up restrictions, basically. If I can, hopefully. All right, so I found a toolkit. Yay. All right, so let's, let's, we're going to look at this together. All right. So let me go ahead and pull up the screen right here. Um, We're we, we going we gonna, <laughs> we gonna to look at this together. So um, it was updated on February 10th. So students benefit from in-person learning and keep their children and staff in school while decreasing risk of transmission of COVID-19 is priority. So the key updates are noted in red. So this this toolkit was, up, like I said, it was updated two days ago and will be effective for February 21st. The only thing that is new is the individual contact tracing and inclusion from school of as asymptomatic people after identifying exposure is no longer recommended statewide in K through 12 schools. Um, so that's very, that's very interesting. Um, of course, masks should be worn in indoor public school, uh, public settings and all individuals age two in order. Of course, we know that. Uh, of course. Um, let's see. Anything that is new. Um... Mask. Of course, all children and staff in schools K through 12 to wear masks constantly. Uh, because students cannot mask constantly during the meal time, students should maintain should maintain physical distance of three feet to the fullest extent possible when active eating. Considering having meals outside where the risk of virus transmission is low. Um, that's not what I need. Uh, I'm just sc scrolling through here. Okay, so here we go. This, 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 this right here. This is what we're talking about here, here. All right. So if you are students, um, if you're low, um, if you're in, a low, in, in, in the low category, so you have low cases, uh, you don't need to screen students. Uh, for teacher and staff, you would need to offer screen testing at least once per week. So it could be every Tuesday, it could be every Wednesday, it could be every Thursday, uh, something in that case. Uh, high risk sports and activities. So uh, if you're in a low or moderate, you will need to recommend screen testing at least again, once per week as well. Um, and then if you're in low and risk, intimate risk sports, you don't need to screen. If you're in a moderate or substantial or very high or high, uh, you would need to offer 
screen testing for students once per week. So again, what's per week? It, it could be every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday. Um, for high-risk sports and activities, if you're in orange, you will need to be tested twice a week um, for participants. Um, if you're in the red of the high-risk sports and extracurricular activities, you will need to cancel that. Okay, you will need to be... Uh, either cancel or hold it virtually uh, to protect in-person learning. And then for the ones that are doing low and intimate risk sports, you need to be detested at least once a week. Um, okay, that is the COVID screening tested recommended. Um, that's the level of community transition. So let's say for instance, Let's say Damien is doing student council, but his county is in is in orange. So what he would need to do, well, first and foremost, all of the students that go to that school in that county would need to be tested at least once a week. And then Damien would need to get tested once a week, once a week as well. And then for Let's see, student council, I would say big. It'll, for his, for people that are participating in student council, they will need to be tested twice a week. So I hope, I hope everybody understands of, of what I mean here. Um, so also, the symptoms, you already know what it is. If you're diagnosed or if you've been tested positive, um, of course, here are the requirements. Person has tested positive with the actually test, but does not have symptoms of COVID-19 and does not have a close contact. Um, you will need to have a repeated PCR tests in the laboratory within 24 to 48 hours of their positive HCG tests. And that test has to be negative. Um, if it's negative, that person can, 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 can immediately return to school. But if does not have a repeated PCR test or has one that is positive within 24 to 40 hours, you have to, you will have to return to school to five days after of that collection date. Okay, on top of that, um, well, after five days, then as long as you don't have any systems, um, that person must continue to wear mask for an additional five days, and you are not required to have documentation of a negative test in order to return to school. Um, but let's say you are positive with a PCR test and just not having any systems. Well, you can return to school after five days, but however, comma, that's after the collection date. Um, again, required to wear a mask and to have a negative test, just not required to have a documentation of, of, of negative, uh, the negative test, sorry. Um, so what if you have symptoms and has been positive, tested positive with the ATG, ATG test or PCR? So you would need to, in order for you to return to school is you will need to, after that first day of system, it needs to be at least five days. You can't take any cough medicine. You can't take any Tylenol or ibuprofen. You can't take any of that, okay? You must be favor, uh, favor free, uh, which I'm about to get to. Uh, it, it has been within at least 24 hours since the person had a fever. So again, you can't take Tylenol ibuprofen, any cold medicine you can't take, okay? It needs to be at least 24 hours since the person have a fever. So let's say I have a fever today, 
So I need to at least wait until Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday at 4.44 p.m. to see if I still have a fear or not without taking any medicine. Okay. Um, again, not required to have a documentation. And then must re uh, did you continue to wear a mask after or for 10 days? All right, so we're going to get into, we're going to dive. This is going to be a, a two-part two, two part thing here because we got a lot. We got a lot of topics to talk about, so I don't want to waste anybody's time today. Uh, we will probably dive more into this uh, next week on the next week's episode um, to, to go in depth and to kind of like break this down and put it into basically to put it into uh, our, in our terms. Um, so going back to, is it too early to have mass mandate, I mean, to end mass mandates? To be honest, and this, this is, this is what I think. I think, I don't know. I, I would say probably like April or May. I wouldn't say March, April or May. That's what I would think. Because you never know if the kids are going to go up and you don't know if they're going to go down. I mean, as of right now, they're going down. Yay. But is it too early? Yes, it is. So I think, I think just hold off. For just for 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 a couple more months, I would say about two or three months, and then we can look at the data and see what's happening. All right, all right. So you guys, you heard that. Um, so thank you, Andrew, for breaking um, all of that down for us. And stay tuned, you guys, for next week as Andrew would dive even into more of that. So. We have to take a break, but there, but let me start that all over again. We have to take a break, but don't worry, we have more topics for you all. So stay right there. You're watching the educator. Welcome back to The Educator. So, Andrew, why don't you start us off with this topic of why are Black students, they need Black teachers um, in their lives. So, start us off with that. So, Black students need Black teachers. So, let me, I don't know, before, before we actually dive in, let me ask you a question real quick. What, who was your first African-American? Okay, let me say this. Let me, let me ask you this question. Let me answer this question. What was your first African-American teacher? Um, and I know we already had this conversation before early on. Um, um, in past seasons. I never had a Black teacher. Never, 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 never. In middle, when I entered middle school, I had a Black female um, principal. Um, then when I went to high school, I had a Black 
assistant principal, a man, assistant principal, and then he turned into a principal. So I never had a black, a actual black teacher. Okay. All right. So. All right. So for. All right. So for me, my. Very first one was I would say elementary. Uh, what was the special call? It was like computer or something, computer technology or something. That's the very first one. Middle school. Which uh, which was Mr. Brown. Uh, Jim, and then not until seventh grade had Mr. Tabor in math. All right, so as we can, as we can, like, we can go on and on about this, but just know that there are not many, there are not many, like, teachers exactly. Okay. Exactly. out in the profession. That's sad. Okay. That is so sad. Go, go ahead, Andrew. I, I um, wait until you finish. Go ahead. So, even I mean, even myself. So, here we are now. What, 10, 11, 12, 12 years later, and we're coming in in the education field, especially the school that I work at, there are not many, there are not many, Af there, mm, yeah, there's not many African-American uh, teachers out there. Now, mm -hmm. there is several, there is several, I, I, I will tell you that, there is several, but however, for me, I feel like there is not enough I mean, yes, I have an African American, African American female as this principal, and I have one one teacher, one LSE teacher, and then you have myself, and then you have I forgot one. Uh, you have a elective teacher. You have an English teacher. Actually, another elective teacher. Sorry, that's two. But again, that just to show that there's not enough diversity. There's not enough diversity. And there, there, there's not enough. And I feel like if we don't put in more African-American males into the teacher profession because I can understand they're like because they always don't 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 they always call me miss and it's not miss it's mister and they use the excuse there are other few teachers which okay look that to me sounds like a problem like, how come you have majority, I'm going to say 75% of your staff, females, and only 25% males? That is a problem. That, that should tell you guys and something. To dig it more, to, to dissect even further, out of those 25% of those that are, out of that 25%, I would say about 10% are males. That is a problem. That is a huge problem. Absolutely. You know, black students who have even one black teacher during elementary school 
are more likely to graduate high school and consider college. Black students with Black teaching experience less exploratory discipline, coach, and fewer office visits, coach, a crucial break in the school to pro, 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 school to prison pipeline, which is a disturbing widespread trend in which school discipline and interaction leads to interaction with the criminal ju justice system. You know, not only bad students who benefit from being taught by black teachers, research has shown that students of color believe teachers of the same race hold them higher expectations, as we do, <laughs> as we do, and be more cultural sensitive than your than than other people. Yeah, that is true. And you and you and you see why we get on them as much because we want them to succeed. We want them to succeed. We want them to to move forward. We want them to be to graduate high school, to graduate college. Because if we don't have that, who knows where they're going to end up? They'll drop out of high school. Then we're not considered college. Then we're not do that. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Which leads to my another topic. Blasters are more times, four times likely to get suspended. Four times. Well. Hmm. And that is our problem. That is a problem. No, like twice I was likely to get expelled. That is our problem. Four, four times likely to get suspended. Because you know why? Because we don't, we they don't, don't know a, again. We talk about this. And almost every episode, almost, just about. But it's all about trying to figure out what is their story? Where do they come from? Because not everyone the same. Not everyone the same. Everybody has different situations going on. I even had a student the, the other day because he was being rude and disrespectful to me. That's so why I said, come, come see me real quick. Come sit on my desk real quick. I said to him, I said, I don't know where you get this disrespectful, this rudeness come from, but you wasn't like this yesterday. He apologized. I was like, I don't understand. Like, what's going on? Is between him and another, like, him, he doesn't want to talk about it, which is, I can understand. You don't want to talk about it. I can understand. But push that to the side and let's have a good day. Yeah. Uh, I understand that you're angry. I understand that. But hey, look. Don't put it towards me now. Put that to the side and let's have a good day. And that's, and again, that's building relationships with your students. That is where I show empathy. That is where I actually care about my students. While they're doing work, I'll walk around, you know, kind of chat with you to see, you know, how's your day going? You got any, 
You got any tea? Because I know you got some tea. And you see why there are so many students that wants me to go to their games. That's why so many students are like, hopefully, hopefully. They want me to be, that's why you have so many students want me to go with them next year. You have others that want me to stay for another year. You have some, even, they're like, well, you should be a school counselor. So that I could just stop out of your office. Which I'm thinking about doing, to be honest. On the down low, thinking about being a school counselor. Nothing wrong with teaching. Not, nothing wrong being a teacher. Nothing wrong. I just... I like I like I like school counselor better, especially at a middle school level. That's just a show. They say, "Oh, Mr. Fred is African American, so let me express my feelings, my problems out to him." What is what is your what is your 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 uh, two cents on this? Um, 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 to be honest, I talk about this on my other show, Damien Talks Education. You guys can check out the many episodes I talk about this. Um, I, I I I right now, you guys, I'm really thinking of. This is, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to say it. It's a problem. This is a problem into our number, I'm going to put it at number one. This is our number one problem in the education field system. It is. It is. It absolutely is, you guys. Our Black students, our Black students need to see more of us into their lives, especially at schools. Because, like I said off of my other show, um, they probably don't have a father figure at home. And the only time they have one is when they go to school if they have a Black teacher in their lives. And with me, this absolutely, and, and hopefully, hopefully, if, if, if I am going to continue on um, being a teacher, I want to hopefully, hopefully, one day, as many years I have taught teaching, and once I retire, I just hope that if they don't learn nothing from my class, if they don't learn nothing from my class, at least, at least I want them to know that I care about each and every one of them, that I have made an impact on their lives, and to see that they are going to continue on into education, graduate from high school, go to college, graduate from college, get a good job, this and that, have a family on their own. That's what I want to see from my students, my students. And this is Oh, upsetting. and don't forget staying out of trouble too. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that is, that needs to be fixed. That needs to be fixed quick. Because if not, you're going to have, and I'm going to just say it and put it out there. You guys can comment at me or you want you're going to have your Black students, many of your Black students, if you don't fix this, if you don't hire more Black teachers, male teachers, especially female teachers, Black female and male teachers into your schools, guess what? Many Black students are going to be on the streets. I'm just saying. They're going to be on the streets, homeless, because they don't have no one like them into their schools to teach them the ropes, to discipline them, this and that. 
that's my two cents, Andrew. So you have any more? Because um, I'm not. I'm not going to keep on with this topic here because it, it is upsetting to me. It is upsetting and ridiculous. It is, you guys. It is. And you guys are not doing nothing about it. I'm sorry. You're not. Go on, Andrew. I'm done. So, and you, I don't know what to say about that. I don't. And y'all wondering why there's only 2% in America that are African American males in the education system. Not even that, I'm gonna go ahead and add the, the, the Hispanic people too. Go ahead and add that in there too. Because they're, 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 they're part of this too. Okay. That is why Jamie is in college right now to get his associate's degree. That's why I'm out to uh, hopefully in the next month or two about to be an IA. And then that's why you have coach, a basketball coach, women's at that, teaching history. That's why you have KJ got He's his in the game. assistant coach of the football team, assistant coach of the women's basketball team. At the, and teaching at a high school level at that part. And then you have myself, currently a, currently a building sub, about to be turned into an ICR. Helping out with the women's basketball team. At that, I have so many students ask me, who is your favorite? Literally. So many students have asked me that. Because that's how much they... That's how much. They're like, uh, Mr. Fra uh, Mr. Fra who is your favorite? I'm like, I don't have a favorite. I don't. No teacher. I don't have a favorite. No teacher should not have no favorites. None. Uh, None. Hmm. No, no, and it's the truth. No teacher should not have no favorites. They no, mm. no. I'm sorry, Andrew. No, mm -mm, no, no. No teacher should not have a favorite student. No, mm -mm, that does not sit well with me. Mm. But that would be for well. a whole. But that would be for a whole different show there. So continue on, Andrew. I said I was going to stop talking. I'm still talking. Go ahead. <laughs> well, when you get your own classroom and your student asks you, who was your favorite student? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and I'm going to tell them, I don't like, have none. And, and that's what I told him. I was like, look, I don't have a favorite. I don't. I have a favorite class, but I don't have a favorite student. No. Uh-uh. Okay. Because there is a class that I'm looking forward to each and every day because they listen and pay attention. They actually get their work done. If I say something or if I'm talking, they're quiet. I have a favorite class, but not a favorite student. I 
it is what it is. <laughs> Oh, we got a whole lot of topics to talk about. Let me let me end this conversation. All right. Uh, we have to take a break, you guys. So sit tight, and we will have more topics for you all. So oh, you're watching the educators. You got you watching the educators. We'll be right back. back to the edge carriage you guys um so let's hop back to some more topics shall we andrew i don't know if you came across this on social media a couple of weeks ago um which is fox news i don't like them you guys so i'll just tell you guys up front on like fox news so fox news they tell america's teachers to get a job and quit the co-host of The Five exposed the damage woes by teachers unions in the remote learning area, which was back in January of 2022. So one of the co-hosts, Danji McDowie, she says, and we're gonna have a video for you guys. Um, she says, these teachers, what half of them have thought about quitting, good. We need to blow up the whole system, quit. Go find a job that when you don't show up for work, they will fire your A. And I'm going to say, but she said the A word, and I'm not going to say that here. Um, so we have the video for you guys, so check it out. Education system now in crisis as the latest COVID outbreak and renegade teachers unions wreak havoc. Schools struggling to stay open, some going remote. It's a stress mess that has teachers and students on the brink. In fact, a new survey finds over the last month, 48% of teachers admitting that they have considered quitting the profession. That comes as the standoff in Chicago enters its third straight day, lives hanging in the balance for more than 300,000 public school students out of class, some hungry, some unsupervised, and yet the militant teachers union finding some support from the ladies of The View. The notion that, you know, teachers should just suck it up and go to work, I, I just, I think it's ridiculous. They are understaffed. Um, it's unsafe. They're under-tested. There's no tests at home. This is a Petri dish that they're being told to walk into every day. If we want to make this less political, it should be the school superintendent taking the lead on this, not the politically elected mayor of Chicago vaccinated they're basically refusing these teachers to go to work for what is a bad cold where they want to stay home and go to bars and drink get to work i wish lori lightfoot would stand up and fire them all 73 percent of these teachers voted to return to remote learning if she fired them all and pulled a ronald reagan wouldn't that be something i guarantee you more than 27 percent of them would show up back in the classroom those women on the view leave it to self Selfish narcissists to defend selfish narcissists. <laughs> these uh, these teachers are willing to hurt children to protect themselves. And I just will point to all of the people who sacrificed and did put their health at risk way before a vaccine to just put food on people's tables. Not just the healthcare workers, but the Amazon delivery people, anybody delivering groceries and packages, putting it out there, even driving Ubers, putting it out there every day. These teachers, what half of them have thought about quitting? Good. We need to blow up the whole system. Quit. 
go find a job that when you don't show up for work, they will fire your ass. All right. So, yeah. Interesting, right? Interesting. Um, so, high school teacher um, from Instagram at Call Me Chevy, um, he says this, he posts his own thoughts to his followers on his social media platform by saying, are you sure about that? Last I checked, there's a 80,000 person, there's a 80 thousand teacher shortage and some schools will be in jeopardy of closing. I never would have imagined that there would be such better towards teachers in America. Let's call it what it is. Educators are being used as a political pawn. It is dehumanizing, disrespectful, and disgusting. The only thing that I the only thing that allows talking heads <laughs> like this to speak this way about teachers is that most teachers they don't have platforms to call them on their s and that is and he is exactly right on that um so fox news owes educators across america an apology so this this i i you guys i They're idiots. I'm gonna just say that Fox News. They're idiots. I don't. I don't listen to them. I don't watch them. They're. They're just idiots because they give out false information about COVID information, this and that. So I don't watch them. Um, but why? Why was she say? And I'm gonna read this back again. She said these teachers. What half of them have thought about quitting? Good. We need to blow up the whole system. Quit. Go find a job that when you don't show up for work, they will fire your butts. Um, and then she also made a comment that teachers, because back then, you know, in January, um, they was doing, we was doing remote learning. And I don't understand why she made a comment of saying that teachers want to hurt students by doing remote learning instead of going, instead of doing in-person learning. What is she thinking? What is she thinking by saying that? Because I believe back in um, January, what the Omicron surge was happening. And, you know, you had lots of schools who went back to doing remote learning for a period of time. So how, why in the world would she say that teachers want to hurt students, they are protecting their students by not doing in-person learning. That's my take on that. So how dare you say that? Teachers will never hurt their students. They want to protect them by not doing in-person learning. So you're saying that you want you want our students to contract the COVID virus, to contract the Omicron. Are you, are you, are you, are, are it, it, this makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. And so that's, that's, that's just my two cents on that. But I don't know if Andrew was listening in, but I just want to ask him this, my question. Um, just I don't, I don't know if you heard um was listening earlier andrew but what do you think of all of this what do you think of all of this of uh, fox news spreading out false information about teachers that they should quit their jobs and also find another job that when they don't show up to work they will fire them by th this makes no sense to me it makes no sense to me it, it really doesn't it really doesn't. So what's your, what was, what's all your take on to this if you was listening early on? Okay. Number one, they're stupid. They're idiots. Um, exactly. Saying that. Uh, because why, why would you even say that? Why? 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 Just why? That's the part that I don't understand. Why would you say that? 
No wonder you give out fake. Yeah, yeah. False uh-huh. information. Uh-huh. No wonder even myself don't watch Fox News. To get a job and quit. Okay, first and foremost, what you're not going to tell me is to get a job and quit. Because I tell you the one thing, I love my job. Okay, I love my job. Yes, the students may get on my nerves. Yes, they are annoying. But at the end of the day, I like what I'm doing. I like seeing these kids each and every day. Go find a job that when you don't show up for work, they will fire you. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? They're idiots. If you don't show up for work. And talk. So, hold on. Because the last, this is kind of funny. Because the last time I checked, they're about. I don't know, about 80,000 teacher charges just right now. And the topic that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, you're wondering why American school schools are, are empty? And what was that saying? Uh, what I say yesterday, uh, last week, about uh, about a lady, uh, twenty three years old, that was trying to get her full bright, full bright scholar. It should not be a political game. Education should not be a, a political game. It shouldn't be. So to Fox News. To Fox News, don't, don't, don't come after teachers like that unless you know what you're talking about. Unless you are a teacher yourself, don't talk about it. Have you visited the classrooms? Have you? Have you toured every single classroom in the U.S. of A? Because if you have not, then I don't want to hear it. Because that is false information. That's false information. Come, go find a job and quit. You know what? How about Fox News? You go find a job and quit. Since you want to give out false information, go find a job and quit. See if anybody will hire you. Since you want to give out false information about education system, about COVID cases, about vaccine information. Y'all are a snake. Y'all snake. Hardly, hardly anybody watches Fox News anymore. Hardly. Because Fox News gives out false information. And you not and y'all wanna um see I'm allowed to say this. Um y'all wanna talk shit about teachers? And y'all haven't been in the classroom? I need for y'all to go sit down because, like, because <laughs> you owe every educator 
in the U.S. of A are freaking apology. Like, right now. Because by you saying, go fire and drive and quit. And Mr. McDowell, or is it Mrs.? It's a Somebody, mess. McDowell. Oh, Mrs. McDowell said, these teachers, half of them have thoughts about quitting good. Ooh. <laughs> Idiots. Ooh. Good. She's happy. She's happy. She said, good. Okay. Okay. G okay. Okay. Bet. So when your child has a sub for the remainder of the year, don't say anything. And when that sub had to explain to y'all child of why their original teacher left, don't say anything. Because you want to say, these teachers, what half of them have thought about quitting, could. That's not good. That's if you know what's happening right now, you will understand. But by you saying could, There is a whole lot of issues going on right now. And you're wondering why teachers are quitting. Low pay, pandemic, stress, mental health. I can go on, but Ms. Medow, half of them have thought about quitting good. We need to blow up the whole system. What system? Blow up what system? education system because the education system ain't going nowhere the education ain't going it, it, it's the same it's the same education system for how long go find a job when you don't show up for work they will fire you Okay. All, All right. right. That Go. is disgusting. Disrespectful. That is disrespectful to me. That's like a slap in the face for me. That's a slap in the face. No, not even that. Backhanded. Because I'm an educator. And that right there, no, I'm not going to quit my job because of, no, I am not. Because you want to tell American teachers they get a job and quit. If you tell me that, I'm going to tell you, and I ain't going to quit, and, and what you going to do? You ain't gonna do nothing, cause I'm gonna tell you to quit. Quit your job, Fox News. Quit your job. Yeah. Be a teacher. Find out what's really happening in the classrooms. I want you. I want you to teach a class. Right. No, scratch that. I want you to teach four classes. I understand True. what is happening, and then then I want you to be out for a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think that I don't. Yeah, Fox News. Yeah, I don't think that would that would happen. That would happen. But I just want to um, chime in again um, because we are running out of time. I just want to say this. Um, some of your comments on to this. Um, I just saw your segment about teachers, and you are trash. I bet you could not do our job for a half of the day. Fox News pays you too much to spread hate, negativity, and false info, and y'all need to be canceled. 
Um, Fox News relies on ignorance. The most ignorant the population, the better, shaking my head. Teachers rarely receive the credit and pay they deserve. And I'm going to read one more. Um, she can feel free to come to the hood I serve here in Chicago and say that again. I'm classy and suburban, but don't let it fool y'all. Seriously, what more scary is those who say amen to her. So, um, that, 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 that's all right. All right, you guys. Um, so yeah, we, we're gonna break, we're gonna break, okay? Um, so it's time for us to take a break and we'll be right back to wrap up our show for today. So don't go anywhere to watch The Educators. Love watching The Educators? You could be a part of our conversation too. The Educators is active on social media, like us on Facebook and be a part of our conversation by telling us what you think. Follow us on Instagram for behind the scenes content of our show and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with what's happening on our show and the world. You keep the conversation going. So get social with your friends now. Like, comment and connect with us on The Educators. Welcome back. What an amazing show we had. Let, let, let me scratch that off. It, it, it was an interesting show today. A very interesting show on today. Um, now, before we go, all month long, we are celebrating Black History Month as we honor the incredible people who have paved the way for all of us. And today we have another Black History Month reading by Andrew Fred. So Andrew, who do you got for us today? So today we are mm -hmm. uh, today we are doing the first African American FBI agent. Yes, FBI agent. Um, so we are talking about Mr. James Wormley Jones. After 100 years, the FBI has finally recognized James Romley Jones as the agency first African-American special agent. He was appointed in December 1919, just 11 years of the creation of the organization that ultimately evolved into the Federal Bureau of, 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 of Investigation. He began his career, however, comma, in 1905 as a police officer in D.C. In 1970, he left the force to serve in the U.S. Army during World War I, where he was trained as an officer and assigned as the captain of the company's F of the 36th Infantry, 92nd Division. His brother served under him as a lieutenant and one of many segregated African-American forces in the Army. They were sent to Europe, fought in France, near their Belgium and German borders. After that war ended, Jones returned to D.C. and was promoted as an FBI special agent. Yes, he was assigned to General Intelligence Division, created in response to terrorist bombings. His experience fit well with the mission. But Jones left the Bureau in April 1923, joining the Pittsburgh Police Department as a detective. Sadly, though, he died in December 1958 at the age of 74. Hundreds of African-American special agents have since followed in his footsteps, including the very first African-American woman, Cynthia Mathis, who joined the special agent ranks in 1976. In February 2019, so almost two years ago, the FBI honored Jones and the countless others that followed in their pursuit to serve the American people as FBI social agents. The HCC launched a year-long initiative to commemorate the 100-year history of African-American special agent service to the FBI and the United States through a coordinated campaign called A History, Our Service. That is your Black History Month reading of this week. We have another one to... We have another one? Yes, we have another one next week for the final. Um, yes, uh, yes. So thank you so much, Andrew, for that. Um, and yes, yeah, as he final, was. Yeah, final thing. 
Yeah, yes, yes. Next week, you guys, we are going to wrap up our Black History Month reading. So make sure you tune in next week. Um, so let's hop right in, you guys, before we leave on today, your motivation affirmation for today. So teachers, pay attention. I am the kind of teacher who takes care of my body and mind so that I can do my best for my students every single day. And I am relaxed and at ease with myself. So that is your motivation affirmation for today. Um, so that is it, you guys. That is it for our show today. We thank all of you guys for watching. We really do appreciate it so much. Um, so have a great rest of your week. Um, and we will see you guys back here next time on The Educator. So, till then, you guys, take care of yourself. See you guys next time. Peace.